Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Order to Reformer Craft. So between the episodes I actually used the time and melted down a lot of the ores I got from just spending a lot of time at the base. So the generator was running all the time. I had actually a couple times over and put some of the crushed ores into the toolboxes. But yeah, now finally I melted all of it down. So I got a ton of copper blocks. So all of the, the copper ingots I got from here. Uh, carried over, turned into sheets, and then I crafted copper blocks out of those. So at this point, almost got five toolboxes completely filled. This one is only partially filled, but almost 5,000 copper blocks in the toolboxes, and then then some. I have a project in mind that will actually need a lot of copper blocks, so that's why I, I tried to to keep the, the copper ore. Probably wasted some of the, the crushed gold ore at some point. Um, I'm also not entirely sure what to do with all the gold at this point. So we can make a lot of sheets, got yeah, five toolboxes worth of sheets. But I'm not even sure what to do with that stuff. I mean, we can like apply it to blocks at some point, but as far as I know, that's something the deployer can't do because I got a sh shift click. Shift, right click, deploy, I can't do that. Uh, so for large scale building, this would also not be nice. I mean, it's also not used in a lot of you know, crafting recipes. So I guess at this point, I'm really thinking about just destroying all of the additional gold or we get at this point because I can't imagine any use for it right now. Anyway, um, then yeah, next there was a, a lot of iron. I made more cast iron ingots so we can make more drills. Also still got ton of crushed iron ore left, so in case I make igneous alloy, yeah, we can probably make a couple hundred more drills. And then I also made some red steel and blue steel again, got 80 at least of each, in case the tools break, like the shovel isn't looking too good. Um, or I want to make a bucket again, or uh, maybe I want to make some, some blue steel armor as well, see how that looks. I think I'm just going to stick now to the red steel tools, but yeah, maybe some different armor just for fun would be Neat. Okay, then I still had some iron left over and I put it into the train track making machine again and we got 7,000 train tracks at this point. So definitely enough to get us all the way to the big lake. There were only like 3,000 blocks missing, but we will also need some building blocks uh, as a support block below. So otherwise it would kind of look weird. Um, I've been thinking, which kind of uh, building block machine or assembly line do we have at this point? So it can make the framed glass. Semi-automatically, I mean, can always take cobble, sand, and gravel from the rhyolite generator. But I don't really have a building block making machine that is like fully automatic. So that's something I would want before. Yeah, of course, I dug up andesite cobble and then in a manual process, pretty much making a lot of mortar, always with the barrels. I turned yeah, everything into those bricks. Um, at this point, I don't have a lot of andesite cobble left over again, so I'm gonna keep some in case I need to make changes to the house. We're used to stuff everywhere, but from now on, I think for the train at least, I want to make rhyolite stone bricks. Kind of like the look of you know, stone bricks anyway, in combination with the train tracks. Something like, I don't know, planks or some wooden stuff could also burn down. I don't think it would be the best choice. Concrete would look kind of odd, so I guess... Yeah, a stone brick factory would be neat. So I'm gonna actually try to yeah, make a whole factory from scratch, but there's a lot we actually need to look into and especially numbers that I need to know because how much mortar will I need and how many, I don't know, mechanical presses do I need? So instead of just trying to eyeball it and come up with a system that kind of works, now I actually wanna do the math and do some proper engineering and build yeah, a system where everything is planned. But of course, that's best to do in creative. All right, let's go. So one design goal this time is definitely to make it quite compact. It should have a small footprint, ideally. Okay, so we definitely need a rhyolite generator for the rhyolite bricks. So this time I actually want to use a different approach. Last time we used the drills. This time I want to use a concept that I've seen robotic using. It's the fact that two blocks can't occupy the same space. Um, we've seen it when I opened the cow barn door in the wrong way once. Some blocks got broken and we can actually also use this for a cobble generator. Gonna also abuse some of the terra firma craft mechanics. So here we basically have water in a corner and then lava or molten metal on top. If you now have a mechanical bearing, which I have yeah, below here, rotate those blocks, basically turn them into entity form and spin them, then 
new cobble will generate while the other cobble blocks are still in, in an entity form. And then after a while they get placed back and basically just replace the old ones. Okay, let's actually try this out. Just have a engine here on top. And then we can provide like a pulse to the sequence gear shift. Okay, this was too fast. So we definitely need to find like a speed where this still works. Yeah, 64 is still good. Okay, I can also slow it down so you can see what's happening. So we slowly turn this, or even slower. Slowly turn this, the new blocks are forming. Then the old ones get just rotated in and replace those. There we go. Okay, then we can have, have hoppers directly below picking up the loose rhyolite. Just a question, how many items do we actually get um, from doing this? That's something I've tested before. So if you break one of those you know, raw or hardened rhyolite blocks, you'll always get between one and four loose rhyolite and it averages out at 2.5. It's just good to know all the numbers because then we'll also need how many machines we'll need later to process all of that stuff. Okay. It's just a question how quick how quickly can we actually rotate this? So it doesn't help if you just spin it around really quickly. So we always have to yeah stop it after a 90 degree turn. So we could just now attach some sort of a clock to the gear shift and see yeah if this works. So at first it actually seems like we can spin this every eight ticks. So you can see the blocks are breaking, getting more and more rhyolite. But but after a while, the sequence gear shift actually pops off. It's kind of interesting. The same happens to a clutch, by the way. So it always happens if we use the eight tick clock. Okay, now the hoppers are filled up. But let's focus on the gear shift. At some point, it just yeah, pops. This really reminded me of a torch burnout from vanilla, but it takes a bit longer. I tried around with this already, because I really wanted to know what's the fastest we can run this at. And it seems like it also happened at 9 ticks, but it took more than a minute until it actually popped off. At 10 ticks, I haven't seen it yet. So I guess a 10 tick lock is probably the fastest we can run this with. If we go to 12 ticks, yeah, it seems pretty good. So this is still quite fast compared to the drills, it's definitely way faster. So next machine we need is actually the saw. So you can either use the chisel and yeah, craft the loose rhyolite into rhyolite bricks or use the saw. So we can, for example, just throw the items on a belt and the saw yeah, makes bricks out of those. Okay, uh, there's multiple ways we can set this up. So we can either just put a chute above and yeah, the bricks are inserted like this. Or we run it on the belt. Not entirely sure what's actually preferable. Is there any difference in speed? To be precise, it takes four ticks to process one loose rhyolite, but it takes six ticks with this one here. Okay, I guess despite it being a bit larger, we probably want to go for this one. Oh, I really like those numbers. So if you use the saw with the belt, then we can saw 300 bricks per minute. And if you break the rhyolite here of the cobble generator every 10 ticks, so 120 times per minute, we get two and a half yeah, rhyolite, loose rhyolite on average. That's also exactly 300. So per uh, basically hopper here, we just need one saw. Fortunately, we can't just put the saw directly below. So apparently, we need those belts to make it fast. I tried around here a little bit as well uh, to see why this one is quicker, but I'm not sure. I guess. It kind of makes sense because we use external force to kind of accelerate the stone and it just glides through the saw quicker while well, here we just drop it in from on top. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, uh, um, need to get all the stuff on the belt somehow. So I was not happy at all that I actually have to use belts because this would make it quite bulky. So I did a bit of more testing. Apparently the chute is actually responsible for slowing everything down. If you actually just put a chute up here and drop stuff down, you still get the 4 tick speed. But it's not related to the belt at all. I think it's just because we have a vanilla item. Anyway, um, so what we can do is basically then just have the saw yeah, two blocks lower. Okay, so five to say I really like it. Still quite compact and super fast. So we're getting 1200 of those bricks at the moment. Last question, how much mortar do we even need? 
in order to match this. So 1200 bricks. Then we need 960 mortar per minute as well. That's quite a lot. Okay, let's see. So in order to make 960 mortar per minute, since we need one sand and 100 millibuckets of lime water for 16, we need 60 sand and basically 12 flux. For 100 millibuckets of lime water, we need one flux. Okay, so 60 sand, 12 flux per minute. So we can definitely make the sand um, for yeah, a smaller contraption here on the side, but making yeah, the flux <laughs> within the same machine, this would be way too much effort because I basically need to make something like marble or limestone from scratch. And this means making a rhyolite generator first, do all kinds of things like, like making clay, making all kinds of dirts just to get the limestone in order to get 12 flux per minute, nah. So it's just gonna provide a chest there. I mean, 720 flux per hour is not a lot and we're getting a really decent amount of bricks there. So I guess making something that's like fully automatic from scratch is doable, but in our case, it would be just way too much effort. Okay, then yeah, we need the machine that makes the 60 cent per minute now. Actually, might be best if we think this through. So we did a really good job making the machine compact so far, but this might not mean much if 95% of the build is just mechanical crafters. And right now it really looks like it. So this is here the recipe to make the brick blocks and there's no convenient alternative. Like we had before with the sticks and the clay, we were able to use mechanical press instead of the more a complicated crafting recipe. Here we have to use a crafter and the recipe is also yeah, an inconvenient one, like sea lantern or TNT from vanilla. So we can't use, for example, mechanical arm. There's access to a brick and mortar here on the side to fill the funnels to those act as filters for the mechanical crafter. Yeah. We could maybe do instead is also try to use hoppers. We get around using the mechanical arm. Might be an option. But of course, hoppers, in case we use hundreds or thousands of them, create a little bit of lag that we don't necessarily want at the base. Mechanical arm can be turned off at, at the end. Hmm. Yeah, okay, so right now, run is actually at 64 RPM, so we don't use <laughs> Yeah, uh, 4,000 stress units just for the mechanical crafter, which runs half the time. Um, so right now I'm getting 27 brick blocks per minute. So I've been talking about getting 1,200 the bricks and, and 960 mortar per minute. Yeah, you can do the math. Um, you would need yeah, like 30 of those mechanical crafter setups in order to deal with all of those items. Oh my god. So what I'm definitely gonna try is to use um, two mechanical arms. But I already tried this. Um, this wouldn't work if you set them up um, with the similar inputs and outputs, because then they can confuse each other. So I guess what would make sense is if you have mechanical crafter dedicated to, or if you have nine mechanical crafters actually dedicated to one to each slot. This might speed things up a bit. Maybe try that. Okay, so using nine mechanical arms is definitely a possibility. Also really looks funny. And it does speed things up, but it's still quite slow. So roughly every two and a half seconds, we can craft four bricks this way. So we can get almost a hundred bricks per minute. Okay, that's still not a lot. But maybe we should actually just restrict our brick farm to something like this. Then we just need to slow down the cobble generator. I mean, 100 bricks per minute doesn't sound a lot. We're talking about yeah, thousands of bricks before, but it's like 6,000 bricks per hour still. Hmm. I mean, if we're a lot at the base, like after 10 hours, we get 60,000 building blocks. It's actually quite a lot. And also, yeah, this setup here, now with the mechanic crafters and the robot arms, running at full speed already needs 8,000 stress units. So this is getting expensive expensive rather quickly. Now if you want to yeah, deal with the output of the, the cobble generator here, or the brick output, you would need, I think, yeah, 10 of those setups, pretty much, or even a bit more. 
So like 80,000 stress units to deal with the items. That's quite a lot. It seems like a sweet spot in terms of stress unit usage could be running it at 128 RPM. So this way it takes exactly 3.6 seconds to make 4 bricks. So we could get a bit over 64 per minute. Okay, so maybe if we go for two crafting setups, have like the chests here in the middle of 18 of those robotic arms. That might be a good approach. Here's another optimization. So we could also use the mechanical arms for two of those crafting setups. There's hardly any idle time this way, so no stress units are being wasted. I also set up the smart shoots here to contain exactly, in this case, 10 bryolite brick and 8 mortar. Because this way it can't happen that all of the arms try to grab items and then there's not enough left over. Okay, so with this setup here, there's 7,000 stress units. We're getting about 125 stone bricks per minute. I guess we can still double this up. Just have a double chest there and here a second smart shoot. And then a yeah, robot arms on the other side as well. Then we would get like 250 stone brick per minute. That's actually a good number. That's 15,000 per hour. Yeah, that's a reasonable amount. Okay, that would mean we would only need a quarter of this yeah, brick generator. I guess one approach into the yeah, how we could do this differently is actually flipping the stone this way. This would also work. Okay, so if you just time this right, then you could also have yeah, the same stone generator being used for the sand we need for the, to make the mortar. So we need basically for every yeah, five stone we make bricks out of, we need one stone that we turn into sand for the mortar. So in case we have this like six long, then yeah, the first five would feed the saw and the last one would make mortar. I guess that would be a nice approach as well. So time for another progress update. I'm at a point now where I'm getting bricks and mortar. So I could either craft it myself, put it in a storage, or yeah, we can add the crafting system to it later. I think I also did a decent job trying to make it quite compact. Because if you spend even more time on this, maybe start from scratch again, trying to beat the compactness of, of this, you can even make it more compact. But there's only a limited amount of time you want to spend on each project. And I think this is quite decent. I already spent actually quite some time on this. A couple hours went to this. Okay, let's uh, take a look. So with, with this cobble generator, that, yeah, I just like the idea of having one cobble generator, not two, so we, sp so we don't split it up. So bricks, got five stones for that, and one just for the sand. Okay, so five hoppers feed those shoots. We drop the loose rhyolite, saw it into bricks, and yeah, we can get it from here. Okay, let's take a look at what happens to the loose rhyolite that we actually turn into mortar, because that's a bit more interesting. So we use the hoppers to put the uh, loose rhyolite directly into the basin. The hoppers can keep up with the speed here, so we just turn the stone every 50 ticks. That's yeah, enough for the hoppers to process all of the items. We actually run this quicker, then yeah, we would need again the shoots below the hoppers and so on. But yeah, this time the hoppers can keep up. Okay, then yeah, we use the mechanical press to make rhyolite cobble. Just a question, how fast do we actually need to run um, the mechanical press? So technically we would need to activate this every 4 seconds because we're making 15 cobble per minute. But that's what we need. Um, so I looked into this. Running it at uh, 32 RPM is fine because then it takes 3.2 seconds to make one cobble. So we always get a little bit of leeway as well. Um, actually quite interesting. So if you actually run this at, for example, 128 RPM, then it takes 16 ticks to process one item. And you'd think if you run it at 256, it would take eight ticks, so be twice as fast, but it's not the case. There's something I observed with a couple of machines by now, that uh, the most stress unit efficient point, when it comes to speed as well, is 192 RPM. Because there the increased speed is pretty much linear and then from 192 uh, yeah, in case of the mixer I think it's actually less to 256 the increase in speed is no longer linear so if you run this at 256 rpm 
takes 10 ticks to process something, uh, which compared to 192, which takes 12 ticks. Also observe this with the mechanical crafter. So always running at 256, of course, is the fastest, but it um, yeah gets less efficient when it comes to the stress units. But yeah, since we don't need to worry about speed here anyway and so on, so 32 is a good number to run this at. Okay, so next we actually need to process the cobble into sand. That means we need to put it through the grinding wheels twice. And I actually spent quite some time on coming up with a system that reuses the same grinding wheels. Okay, so what happens now here is we got a filter. This drops cobble and then also gravel onto a belt here and gets transported uh, to the crushing wheel. On the other side we get the gravel or uh, the sand in the end out and it's getting actually collected by the funnel. So it goes off the belt, turns into a vanilla item and is immediately picked up by the funnel here, put into the same vault. In the case we have gravel, we just drop it again until we get sand. Okay, the next step is we take the sand and eject it here with this funnel into a basin directly again. And here we also do two steps. So we got a pump that pumps in water, we got it from the source here. And here we got the flux on the side. That's something, you, yeah, as I said, I'm going to supply manually. So right now we need three flux per minute to run this machine, which is not a lot. So one hour of running this and three stacks are gone. So this lasts a couple hours. So in the same basin, we have lime water and water in case we drop in white sand. Yeah, we mix this with the lime water and make the mortar. In case we don't have any lime water left, then we just mix the water and flux into lime water. Okay, so this also saves some space. And since this is not running that quickly, it also works here. Okay, then what actually happens next is the basin drops the items directly onto this belt again, where they just get picked up by the same funnel again and go into the item vault. Uh, fourth time, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and then we drop out the mortar, there's a filter again onto the belt there. There's also a speed controller, so we run the belt a bit quicker um, because otherwise the items here would keep piling up and the source couldn't put the stuff onto the belt. The source also run at 64 RPM, so just double the speed here, so they can definitely keep up. Technically, it would have been possible to use a single saw. But uh, would have been, I don't know, the wiring would have been a bit awkward to get it to work. So a saw isn't expensive. So we just run this at 64 RPM. I think it also looks a bit cleaner if you have multiple, although we don't need them technically. Okay, so one last thing, I added a neat on off switch now. So we can just flick the lever here. And then we send a short pulse into the clock there. The piston pushes up the block and we close the clock circuit. So every 50 ticks, we activate the sequence gear shift and turn by 90 degrees. And at the same time, yeah, that wasn't really a nice way to do this. Just using the redstone link here, we also turn off the torch here and then it's a rotational force going through the shaft. And in case we actually turn this off, there's an extender. So it keeps this stuff here powered just a little bit longer so like all of the stone can be processed. I set it to 10 seconds now. Can maybe add a bit more but that, that looks, looks looks good yeah. Okay then it's just a slight issue that we actually if we turn this off we send another pulse into the thing here. In some cases it would be bad but with this system here in particular it doesn't really matter. The worst thing that can happen is we spin it and then immediately spin it again. Um, yeah, not a big deal in case this actually happens. Yeah, don't see an issue. Okay, then let's actually build this in survival. Then I guess next episode we can add the crafting system. But there I actually need to gather some materials first. So we need 19 of the precision mechanisms to make all of the robot arms and so on. Yeah, let's, let's just focus on this first. You can already craft it manually in the next episode. We're gonna probably also make an assembly line <laughs> to make those mechanical arms. We just need to find a good place to build this somewhere. So it's seven blocks tall. So it wouldn't fit in the house anywhere really, making a separate building where we haven't really finished decorating the first cobble generator. Not sure. So I thought here maybe we have a lot of unused space. 
one side of the cheese factory. And I don't think we're gonna expand this at some point. So I guess it could fit in there. Only downside is we got slabs here on top and lava two blocks below. So right here we would have lava. This could actually burn down unless we place another layer of blocks below the slabs. Yeah, sort of fire blocks can't be placed there. That would be one way to prevent actually. And the other one would be, what if we actually replace those wooden slabs with something they can't burn, but still looks like wood, like casings, that would also be an option. Hmm. I'd say this is actually already fireproof there because well, the casing can't burn and there's redstone dust above, which basically blocks the space for the air block. I guess I would only need to place like three la la lines of um, white concrete here on top. Then it's also yeah fireproof. Let's do that instead. All right, there we go. We have the machine in survival now, hopefully built correctly. Okay, let's turn it on for the very first time. Let's see if it works. Okay, that seems to work. Do we pump water? That's also important. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, the next question is, just heard a hammer. I set the funnel output to eight items at a time. So we should drop cobble soon, then pick it up and drop the gravel immediately again. Got the speeds seem to be correct. I think technically you could actually make those crushing wheels. There we go, first trouble was, uh, cobble was dropped. Those crushing wheels, um, half as fast would also still be fine, but uh, there's not much to save. So no extra effort for this. Yeah, looks good. Now we should get the sand soon. I think it takes like 20 seconds to actually crush stuff. Eight gravel is in there. Okay. We do have lime water, right? Okay. Yeah, sand was dropped as well now. And it should be the first mortar. Oh, this stuff isn't spinning. Oh, okay. It's kind of tri quite tricky to get there. What's the problem here, even? Ah, oh, it just looks like... Yeah, okay, that should be an easy fix. Um, like a gearbox is missing. Or a shaft. That should be easy to fix. Got one on me. Okay. And also spinning, hopefully also in the right direction. There we go. Yep. <laughs> and here we have it. Bricks and mortar. Okay, so it's working. Yeah, but I don't think I'm gonna do a lot of manual crafting now because next episode the plan is to build the crafting system. But before that, um, I, I just had to craft more precision mechanisms for two rotation speed controllers here. Yeah, I've had it with that. Uh, I'm gonna make an assembly line for that and then I'm gonna build the crafting system. Okay. <laughs> That's it for today, guys. Yeah, good progress. Really like this machine as well. Okay, hope you enjoyed watching, thanks so much, and see you next time. Bye-bye!